Hey y'all, it's Sunday night and I have finished cleaning up the kitchen and the man's gone upstairs to uh, do his nightly ritual. He's got to go to work tomorrow. Um, I'm just having my tea, big old tea. This would be the three ginger. I like it. It's very aromatic. And got a little bag of almonds. Gonna take my pills and just kind of wind down. And thinking about what we were talking about, well, what I was talking about earlier about body image and how we really beat ourselves up. Um, and how we let other people beat us up because of, you know, the way we look um, translates a lot of times into how we feel about ourselves, how other people treat us just because of our size. I was always a big girl and I always, I developed a personality so that I didn't have to, so that I could laugh at myself when other people were laughing at me. So I think tonight we're going to talk about body image and it's hard, especially for women, you know, um, we're so hard on ourselves, always. Um, you have to love yourself to make a permanent change. So for me, that was an ongoing journey. You know, I, I had a hard time accepting that I was worth making a change and putting that much effort into making myself better. So tonight, um, some of the things that helped me kind of centering myself and um, figuring out how to start that journey because a lot of times you don't know, uh, where do I start? So I think, firstly, I think it sounds really corny and goofy, but really when you wake up in the morning and you become conscious and aware, I think you really have to start out with a positive feeling about the day. You know, I have a positive, I wake up and I look outside and no matter if it's raining or sunny, whether I've got shit to do or I don't have shit to do, I try to infuse myself with a sense of positivity. I'm going to get up. And I'm going to just face the day. Um, a lot of times we get up and all we feel is dread. Or all we feel is unhappy. Or we roll out of bed and despise ourselves. And you really have to stop doing that. That's really the first step. Um, another thing you want to do is sometime during your day. It's usually easier in the beginning beginning of the day where it was for me to take five minutes, just five minutes and meditate, whether you're still sitting in bed or you're, you know, downstairs or whatever. Just take five minutes and shut everything off and just kind of feel your breathing in and out. It's another thing you have to practice. And um, maybe, you know, instead of that, maybe you like to write, keep a little book and just write stuff. It doesn't even have to be important, not lists, not like a grocery list, but how you're feeling, you know, what you're looking forward to, stuff like that. Um, positive stuff. Um, you have to change your internal dialogue. The way that you talk to yourself in your head. I think that has a lot to do with, you know, how we present ourselves to other people and how our attitude can show on our face. 
Um, I know I see that on a lot of other people. You know, when you meet somebody and they've got some sort of thing going on inside of them, you can feel it. You know, the way you talk to yourself, if you're berating yourself, if you're telling yourself you're stupid or you're ugly or you're fat, it's going to show up, you know. Um, you can't do that. You can't berate yourself. You just, you can't do it anymore. You've got to stay positive and, you know, change that dialogue. The hardest thing for me, um, I think, was feeling feelings. Because I don't like feelings. I don't like to feel feelings. And that's weird, right? That's, um, it's an odd thing to not want to feel your feelings. But I'd had... I've had a lot of trauma in my life, and I think I got so used to just putting it away. You know, it made me really angry, so I was a aggressive, angry person all the time because I had sadness and pain and hurt and discomfort all the time around feelings. And it wasn't until I kind of went into recovery and started to acknowledge some of those, that pain and those feelings, even if it wasn't with another person, even if I was just doing it by myself in a safe space, um, you really have to let them out. Don't avoid it. Don't, because you really, if you need to have a therapist to be able to share those feelings, sometimes that's, the best thing to do. Um, I used to scream in my car a lot, top of my lungs, till I couldn't breathe. It helps. Sometimes. Another thing, positive thing that you can do, every day do something new. Do something new, it, another goofy thing. Learn a word, learn a foreign word, Try a new food you've never tried before. That's a good one. I love doing that. Uh, walk up to somebody and say something positive. A lot of times, you don't know, maybe that person needs that that day. I do that a lot these days. And, and sometimes it might come off as weird, but um, I'll see somebody that has a great hairdo or is wearing a nice color or has a nice pair of shoes on, and I'll just go up and say, hey, you look awesome in those, or, you know, those are fantastic, or your hair looks spectacular, and you just see the, the look, the light come into their face uh, a lot of times, and that reflects back on you, and you feel that inside, so um, I try to do that. Um, Another thing you need to do is kind of discover what you like. A lot of times, especially as women, we give a lot of ourselves away to our kids and our spouse. Um, and we lose ourselves. And I know when my kids were little, I wasn't a person. I was the maid, the cook, the bus driver. You have to, even if you have small children, you have to take back a part of yourself. Because if you're not a whole person, you have nothing to give to somebody else. So you really, you have to discover what you like internally, um, the things that you enjoy, and keep those for yourself. You know, cultivate that um, as much as you can. Um, being patient with yourself, you know, um, in the program, we always say it's progress, not perfection, because nobody is perfect, and you're never going to always get it right. So you have to be patient with yourself. You're going to screw up. We all do. And it's not, you know, it's not a huge deal. It really isn't. You, you have to keep it in perspective. And a lot of times, in the moment, we don't keep that perspective, so everything is a catastrophe. I catastrophize all the time. But really, if you step back and take a look at it, in a week, is anybody going to remember this? 
you know, in a month, is this going to even matter? Um, so try to, you know, be patient with yourself and, um, and be grateful every day that you're alive, that you're healthy, that you have food to eat, that you're, you have the internet, that you're, you know, not dying of a horrible disease, that you're, I mean, every day there's something to be grateful for. And you should recognize that because that's another thing that makes you kind of tunnel vision and be short-sighted and not see the whole picture is uh, not being grateful for what you have right in front of you. I think that's important. Um, honor and respect your place on this planet, that you are a human being. You deserve all the respect and you know, honesty from people and love and desire and all of those things. You, you deserve everything that, you know, no matter what anybody says, um, you have to know that, you know, you should not allow toxic people in your life. If there are toxic people, you need to learn to distance yourself from them because that shit will rub off. And you don't want that. Um, and, you know, I think the biggest thing is focusing on the positive. Keeping a positive attitude. Having that attitude of gratitude and every day taking the time to think, you know what? Things could be so much worse in so many ways. Um, try to see all the positive there is in your life. And, um, and for me that was a hard one because I felt like I had been dealt a really shitty hand. And, uh, you know, I had to say, God, you know, a few years after some things happened, I had to say, you know what, a normal person wouldn't have survived that. You have to kind of praise yourself for enduring the things that you endure and, and, you know, rescue yourself and be your own best friend and say, God dang, you, you're an awesome person. You really did a good job. You know, you're never going to get a pat on the back for just living a life. But um, sometimes it it feels good, you know, and hopefully other people will see that strength and that goodness in you and, you know, maybe your positivity and your gratitude and those kinds of things will cause somebody else to, to feel those feelings too or to, you know, change their outlook, so... I know this doesn't seem to have a lot to do with keto, but it really does. And in all the years that I have been dealing with my weight, I've come to realize that my weight isn't just about my weight. My weight was about how I felt about myself, how I thought the world saw me, how I dealt with my feelings. It's all so intertwined that if we don't get a, a hold on that, and you know, a lot of times we can say, you know, because the way my body is, or because I don't like these certain foods, I can't control that I'm not able to, you know, change the way I eat. I have to eat the way. And I say it's a load of bullshit because I have completely Frankenstein guts and I've managed it. You know, I had reactive hypoglycemia. I had um, really bad dumping syndrome uh, because I had gastric bypass. I can't digest a lot of different meats, fats. I have to be very careful because I don't have a gallbladder. Um, there's any number of things, okay, that I could have used as an excuse um, not to continue trying, but 
you know what? Bulldog that I am, I said, all of this be damned, I'm going to find a way. And I did. I found a way. And now it's about finding balance. And for me, balance is a hard thing because I'm a woman of extremes, you know, full throttle. So I think a lot of us are. But um, it's an ongoing journey. Taking care of yourself mental health-wise is just as important as meeting your macros. So I just wanted to go over that with y'all tonight and you know, know that we all share this. I know we do. Whether you're doing it for weight loss or whether you're doing it trying to get your health back. Um, you know, it, it, all, it all plays in your mind kind of the same way. You know, you'll never think you'll be healthy again. You know, maybe you're not overweight. Maybe you are doing it for... Um, PCOS or um, diabetes or whatever, you know, um, terrified that you're going to have to live as a diabetic. I would be terrified, you know, and even if you're at a regular weight and you just want to get rid of your meds, um, fibromyalgia, any of that stuff, it's all linked together, health and mental health. So, we have to be gentle and kind with ourselves and know that it's not going to happen overnight. But as long as we keep going, every inch is progress. So I just wanted to tell you all that tonight and that I love y'all. And I want y'all to take care of yourselves. And I will see you later. Night.